Um, actually, we're spending a lot of time right now, second to recruiting, trying to figure out how to mesh the elite. That's one of the things we've talked about. I mean, Wisconsin defense has been phenomenal. And actually, uh, in 2021, I believe we were number one in the nation against the run. And Cincinnati, the same year, was number one in the nation against the pass. And, and we're getting to figure out the way to mesh these together. So my job is to not give you too much detail so people don't know what to prepare for. But certainly, um, the defense here is what we've been able to recruit great players to is proven phenomenal in the Big Ten Conference. So we're going to hold on to a lot of that. But we're also going to bring some of that, as you call it, 335, although I think it's a unique 335 that uh, might give some different looks to people that haven't prepared for it. You, you mentioned the Big Ten. You've got a ton of experience in the Big Ten, but you also the last two years at Cincinnati. Right. You know about that league. You know the discussion about Power Five, Group of Five, all that. You just saw Tulane beat USC. Is there much difference between the two leagues, between the talent level you see, how hard you have to prepare? You know, yes and no. So here's what I mean by that. Yeah. Probably week in and week out, the beating in the Big Ten's a little bit different. Yeah. Okay, there are definitely great teams in the AAC, great teams. Beat USC, we were in the college football playoffs a year ago at, at Cincinnati. Um, so there are great teams, there's skill that's drafted in the first round, but probably O-line and D-line across the board from the top to the bottom of the league is different and that's where that can wear on you a little bit. Michael Bartholomew from Wisconsin State Journal. When you look at what you have on defense, obviously they recruited really well at the outside linebacker position here. How do you see those types of guys maybe becoming hybrid players or changing with what you guys want to do uh, with the defense is coming up? So we, first of all, we are absolutely going to use those guys and continue to recruit those guys. There is a long history of um, great players and, and great scheme to utilize those players. Um, they're on the roster right now. You know, those guys are on the roster right now and they're difference makers. So yes, we will continue to use those guys in a similar fashion, but it will have to evolve to exactly what position does each individual fit best when we're doing some of the 3-3-5 stuff. And, and, and that's going to evolve over the course of spring and that's going to evolve over the course of the summer. But um, we will continue to recruit and utilize those guys because they're special. Has your job as defensive coordinator in general gotten tougher over the past years? I mean, you look at the, the semifinal games. I mean, I know TCU had a couple defensive stores, but offenses were going up and down the field. Is it more difficult what, what you guys do? It's hard to watch sometimes when those points keep going like that. I mean, watch both those semifinal games and 91 points in the Tulane USC game, and some of those things are very difficult to watch. Has it gotten harder? You know, I live day by day, year by year. Mm -hmm. Every year is a challenge. Mm -hmm. But when offenses became a lot more 10 and 11 personnel yeah. versus 12 and 21 personnel over the past dozen years, and when the tempo started to get more and more involved and people tried to settle into when they're tempo, when they're not, sure, those, those raise some challenges. But uh, I will say, one thing the AAC prepares you for is there's a whole bunch of different styles of offense and different styles of tempos and different things you have to prepare for. So um, I think that's put us in good place. Mike, along those lines, uh, just thinking this on the way here, so I don't really have a chance to look. But have you ever gone against Phil Longo offense? Uh, no, okay. I have not. I have not. But I've watched it enough to know that uh, it'll be a challenge every day out here, and, and that'll be good for us. And then the other thing we're going to have to find then is Coach Fix going to have to set us up to the periods where we're getting the smash mouth type of football that, hey, we've been great in those scenarios and we need to continue to do that. But uh, it's exciting and it's going to be a challenge for our guys every day. So that's good. From your perspective as a defensive coordinator, what are the challenges of trying to handle the offense that Phil Longo wants to run or from what he's run in the past? What, what, what stresses do you so, We'll learn, we'll learn that as we go, but he does a great job of, of finding the space, putting defenses in conflict um, with some of the RPO game, and, and he does a great job of finding the space on the football field. So that's obviously a challenge, especially with your conflict players, your linebackers and your safeties, those types of guys. But that's not the bottom line, how successful we'll be against 
Phil Longo's offense. That might be the bottom line for some other people in the league. We need to make sure we're prepared for the guys that we face on Saturdays. Steve McGarry, the Associated Press. I'm just wondering, first, how important do you think your Big Ten background is for this job? And how much did you get out of those couple of years in the AAC? And how do you think that benefited you? As a I, think, I think the Big Ten background is, is huge. I, I do feel like I understand this league. Um, Coach Fickle, myself, a few other on staff have had a lot of success in this league, some Big Ten championships. Um, so feel like we understand that and what it takes and what type of guys we need to recruit, how we need to develop players. Wisconsin um, has definitely developed guys. It's not, you know, maybe just bring in a whole recruiting class of five stars and throw them out on the field. So I think that that background is huge. I will say um, the AAC experience has forced me to adapt to a ton of different styles of offense on a weekly basis. So that helps you in terms of how to coach your guys to be able to adapt, to make adjustments, to have to play a little bit differently from week to week. So that, that's been a good experience in those regards. And you watch some of the AAC coaches move on and have huge success in Power 5 CTCU, you know, and, and you know that there is a benefit. Yes, yes. He's great. We've actually come out here and met and talked ball in the past. Um, Cincinnati defensive staff and the Wisconsin defensive staff, not ever thinking there might be times where we face on the field or a situation like this, but he's been fantastic. He's talked about um, the guys. He's uh, watched film with us. He's doing nothing but help the program move forward. Jacob Borowski from the Wisconsin State Journal. With, well, what were the conversations that led you to come with Luke over to Madison? Then? Given the opportunity, it was a no-brainer to me. I mean, he's a fantastic person to work with. He's a person I trust 100%. Um, when I was given the opportunity to go work for Coach Fickle at Cincinnati. I, I was in the Big Ten at that point, but I wanted to work for him. I know how good a coach he is, how good a person he is. Um, me and my family trust him, so it was a no-brainer. It was just a matter of, uh, was he going to give me the call? And, and he did, so, yep, I'm in. Mike, you and Luke worked together when you were very young in your coaching yeah. career at Ohio State. Did you see in him at that point, like, this guy's got head coach potential, or what, what was he like back in those days? I did, I absolutely did, but, but I'll tell you this, he, you could tell he was very, very intelligent. You could tell his guys um, believed in him, trusted him, and responded and played for him. Um, but he also really understood what his role was at that time, you know, which, which I admired. Like, he could have come in as a smart, really good football coach, and, but he understood where he was at Ohio State at that time. And that was really impressive as well, as good of a coach as he was. So you, you knew um, when the opportunity arose, he was going to be successful. Mike, you mentioned the uniqueness of, the, of your 3 3 5. What makes it unique? I, I think if you just freeze the film in terms of our base alignment compared to some other people that call themselves 3 3 5, it's, it's a little bit different. It's actually a little bit closer often to. Um, the 3-4 that we run here in our base defense, right? Normally you think 3-3-5, three, three, it's three D linemen with the three linebackers stacked right be behind each of the three D linemen and those guys are just runners. If you look at us, we are a little bit more of a 3-4 type of a base look with some of the space to the field being occupied by different people than your traditional 3-4. But uh, we try to make sure that we have bodies that are in those windows, in those spaces that Coach Longo is always looking for, you know, so. Aaron, you've been on the road recruiting these last few weeks. What has been the reaction to you being at Wisconsin and just the excitement around you know, the Wisconsin program? No, I, I think there's big time excitement and you can feel it. I think that people across the country recognize what a higher Coach Fickle is and, and what a great coach he is and, and recognize the history and proud to do tradition that Wisconsin already has. And with that pairing, and it's a like-minded pairing too, right? I mean, Coach Fick is not all flash. 
I mean, he's substance, he's work ethic, he's Wisconsin football. So there's excitement. People recognize the meshing of two really special things. Like, what have your initial reactions, or initial kind of impressions been of the players that are here, and how much can you work with them once they get back here in school before spring practices? How much can we work with them by rule? Is that what you're, is <laughs> yeah. that what you're asking I mean, me? Like, I mean, like, well, what do you I'm, exci- to I'm, do when you're- I'm excited. I'm excited to work with these guys. What, what I've noticed right off the bat is, you know, they absolutely love ball because, shoot, I'm up here in the offices because we weren't the ones coaching them during during bowl prep. And as soon as practice is over, there's just a streamline of dudes going up to watch film on their own. The coaches aren't even out of the shower yet. And there's kids going up there to watch film. And you can just observe the intelligent questions that they ask. And, and um, I had fun you know, asking them about some of the defenses they put in the bowl games that maybe involve checks and adjustments. And just ask them a question, hey, so what does auto mean this week? And just listen to them be able to explain it from A to Z. It's a group of guys that love football. They're smart football players and they play hard. So I don't know what better combo there is. Yeah, so I would say across the board defensively, there are good players, especially at like starter levels across the board, but there are a couple positions where the depth isn't quite like you want. I think defensive line is one that we're definitely going after. We're targeting. We need to make sure that we continue to build the depth. And it, and it might not be something that's critical for this fall, but moving forward it will be. If we were to say one spot, that'd be the one I'd jump at. Um, Transfer portal, I think that we, we are targeting some guys without a doubt, but we are not going to become a transfer portal team. I mean, that, that, that's to me such a gamble, right? You're gonna have good years, you're gonna have bad years, you're gonna have years where culture's fantastic, you're gonna have years where it's a battle, and, and we're gonna have fantastic culture here. That, that is what Coach Fickle, he, we will have fantastic culture here. So we'll be very selective of the guys we take through the portal.